three. I was here about two months ago. I, I had been uh, on this journey in California. I had gone for a three-day meeting. The Lord told me to take my RV out there. He said, clear your schedule out. Watch what I'm about to do. I went out there and I stayed for seven weeks straight. Meeting after meeting after meeting. God was moving in a tre tremendous way. And then I uh, went off at the end of November to Hong Kong and into the Philippines. Now, how many have been hearing about all the protests in Hong Kong? Yeah. Well, I, I told, they were going to cancel the meetings because the protests have gotten violent and they're huge and tens of thousands. Uh, as many as a million people have come into this city at one time and all over the place. And I said, you are not to cancel the meeting because I said, that's why I'm coming. Yes. Hey, hello. Yeah. What I didn't know was where the church was is downtown center and right where the church was is where all the protests have been happening. I didn't know that. They didn't tell. I told them I'm coming. And so six months straight, there has been protests, protests, even in their building. They, they rent a whole floor because uh, everything in Hong Kong is high rises. They rent, they rent a, um, a, a floor and a half. And uh, in the, they're in the second story. On the first story, the police have actually arrested protesters in their building little Molotov cocktails and, you know, little, uh, little uh, IEDs and things. And so, but the weekend I was there, absolutely nothing. Wow. Complete peace. I mean, you walking on the streets, everything was fine. But God was moving in an incredible way. Then we went over into the Philippines. We saw hundreds and hundreds saved. We saw in person, face to face, uh, nearly 2,000 people baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues. But not only that, one of the days we had 2,000 people in the service, but they were live broadcasting to all of their 200 uh, satellite churches. And when I prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they gave me the report the next day that thousands and thousands in those churches were also receiving the prayer language of the Holy Spirit. So we don't even know how many thousands. It was phenomenal. And I thank you for all that. God has opened up some new doors. In just uh, the end of January, I will be heading out to China. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you understand that China, the persecution of the Christians has increased again exponentially. There was a season where it backed off, but now it has gotten very, very intense. Uh, it is actually illegal for a minor to go to church. Are you all hearing me? They have inter introduced such uh, technology that now you know they have cameras in some of their cities. They have cameras on every street. They're using face recognition technology to recognize who you are and to track where you go. And if you go into places that they don't agree with, like a church, or go to a place they suspect is a church, it actually puts a recording on. Uh, they have they, the, the technology records that you went in there, and they assign you a. Um, uh, basically a social score, a social uh, um, uh, behavioral score. And if you go into places they don't want you to, or do things they don't want you to do, they lower that score. If they lower that score, you can't buy a, a, get a loan. You can't own property. You actually can't, actually, you can't get certain jobs. So if people are, they see people going into what they know are churches, they actually lower their social score so they can't get owned property. They can't, are you hearing me? Yeah. Then, by the way, this is the, what's trying to come to America. There's, we're heading in there to China, heading to Pakistan, going to some safe places this year. You know, every once in a while you say, Lord, you know, I, I do feel called to Hawaii. <laughs> Somebody's got to go. <laughs> but there are, God is moving around the world. But I want to speak to you today. The Lord put it in my heart two months ago when I was here to share with you that today I would be speaking prophetically. That God often speaks to me about the next year and gives me prophetic words. And as I was praying and seeking God about this, he wasn't speaking to me so much about the next year as he began to speak to me prophetically about the next decade. Yeah. So today I want to talk about the 2020s. Yeah. Yeah. 
Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says this. Surely the Lord God does nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. Say it again. Say nothing. nothing. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Yeah. Now nothing means yeah. nothing. God does absolutely nothing except he reveals that he's going to do it before it happens. Yeah. Because God does not want us caught unaware. Yes, I'm, I'm going to say that again. God does absolutely nothing except he first reveals that it's going to come to pass. Yeah. So that he gets the glory. Wow. But he also does not want his people un, un, unaware and unprepared. Yeah. That's right. That's and right. something major is about to shift. In Isaiah, excuse me. <clears throat> Father, we give you praise. In Job chapter 2, verse 28, we all know this verse. And afterwards, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I want you to put that in your spirit. Because I'm going to go somewhere in a very strong direction this morning. But if we're going to receive the end time outpouring of God. is a prophetic anointing. That your soul on all flesh. Someone say all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. The prophetic anointing is an anointing that requires that you are able to hear from God. And then you're able to declare what God says. Now that doesn't necessarily mean, in fact, the majority of that would not be people hearing from God. Standing with a microphone in front of a congregation and declaring prophetically what God says. I believe the majority of that will be people hearing from God and then declaring in agreement in prayer what God is saying. Amen. Are you all hearing me? How many believe God will answer your prayers when you're praying what he's saying? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm going to say that again. How many believe God will answer your prayers when you're praying what yeah. he's saying? Yeah. And in order to pray what he's saying, you're going to have to be able to hear what he's saying in a much greater degree. Yeah. There is an anointing coming. And I'm going to get to this in the second part of the message. But there is a new incredible sudden increase of clarity in hearing the voice of God. Amen. That is coming upon the body of Christ. You are not going to struggle to hear his voice. In fact, it's going to be so clear, so strong, so common in every part of your life that when God is not speaking, you won't be concerned. You say, why? Because you will be so comfortable in your ability to hear the voice of God that when he's not speaking, you are at peace because you know he will speak when he needs to. You won't be struggling. Did something go wrong? Why am I not hearing? You're just realizing everything's okay. I was sharing a little bit of this with Pastor yesterday. And I love the analogy he brought up. He said it's kind of like putting your GPS on your phone. When you first get on, it says for the next 175 miles, continue straight. And then she doesn't talk to you for 175 miles. Are y'all hearing me? You got the instruction. You're going straight. And as long as you're on the right path, she's not talking to you. The only reason she speaks up is if you take, go off an exit. Come on, amen. Or maybe there's an accident ahead. But you're an uh, accident ahead in 3.4 miles. But you're still on the best route. <laughs> Come on, amen. And I thought that is so good because you are so confident that she is going to speak up. Yes. You're so confident that the GPS is going to come in with, with, in 10 miles. Oh, okay, we're, we're getting close now. And sometimes that's the way our, our processes, parts of our life are. God speaks and then he's quiet for a long time. And you're like, well, is there, he's, not keep, he, he's still not speaking. He all, you're on the right path. And you can trust that if you get off path, he'll say, reroute it. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I love about the GPS, the GPS is full of mercy. The GPS just says, no, you dummy. Why did you turn there? <laughs> Come on, amen. The GPS says, never rebukes me. The GPS simply says, rerouting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix. You, you've gone off course 
Ghost here. I'm going to get you back on course. But what we need to make sure is we don't do like what we do when Siri keeps trying to, or, or GPS keeps trying to reroute us, that we sit there and say, and hit end. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I want to go off course. No, no. And I love that, but there is, a, there is a clarity of the voice of God that is coming. In the next decade, in this next decade, it's going to begin to increase exponentially unlike anything we have ever known before. You are going to rest in knowing the voice of God. And it's not something that, oh, this is a great blessing. And it is a great blessing. But it is something that is going to be an absolute necessity. Amen. It is not something that you like, oh, Lord, I wish you would give this to me. And if I'm particularly good enough, maybe you'll give it to me. But it's something that God say, no, I desire you to have it because you need it in order to walk through the days that are coming. Yes. Amen. Yes. The 2020s. Let me give you a verse. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. Arise, shine, <laughs> for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will ri arise over you, and his glory will be seen. Someone say seen. See. His glory will be seen upon you. The 2020s, and prophecy does not come to scare us, but to prepare us. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The 2020s is going to be a decade of extremes. I'm going to say that again. I know that many of us are hoping everything's going to calm down, but it's not. I, whew, well, we were doing pretty good up to that point. The 2020s are going to be a decade of extremes. There will be extreme wickedness on public display. It's going to get far more vile, far more public, and far worse. But at the same time, there will be extreme outpourings of the spirit of holiness. There's going to be such a separation between the light and the darkness. Yes. There's going to be such a separation between the worldliness and the godliness. Yes. Holiness is not going to be a dirty word. Yes. Come on, in the church, holiness has become almost a dirty word. Yes. Oh, you're one of those holiness people. Holiness. No, it's going to be the spirit of holiness that's going to cause a holy separation. That's right. There are going to be, and we've already seen this, but it's going to increase. There are going to be greater extremes in weather. Yes. It's going to, I mean, extreme, yeah. extreme heat waves, extreme droughts, extreme floods, extreme cold. Wild swings are, 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 are going to continue to increase. There is going to be an extreme hardness of heart yes. Yes. people are being given over to believe a lie yes. and they will believe it you can't rationalize with them you can't sit down and have a conversation over a meal with them they, there's going to be extreme hardness of heart yes. that is going to take place but also at the same time there's going to be extreme outpourings of the spirit yeah. of repentance yeah. and brokenness. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be like, and you're going to see it happen with people that are so extremely hard to God. And then the suddenness of the breakthrough of the revelation of God and the glory of God. It's going to be, oh gee, we're seeing a little foretaste of it. It's going to be a Kanye West kind of thing. It's going to be one of the most vile rappers who stood up and actually claimed himself to be like Jesus. He actually called himself uh, as a name of, of Christ, that he was a Christ figure. And now this unbelievable switch. Hello? Hello? 
Some of y'all looking at me straight. You don't even know what I'm talking about. We're talking, we're talking night and day. Yeah. I've heard, I've seen the videos. I've listened, I've heard some of the songs. It's like night and day, yeah. night and day. It's like extreme. And, 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 and the torment, in fact, he is, a, he is a picture of what I'm talking about. The decade of the 20s is going to be a, a, a season of extreme. There's also going to be an extreme increase in the prophetic. An extreme increase in the prophetic. It's not going to be just a handful of prophetic people. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> it's going to come upon you. He said, your son and your daughter shall prophesy. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's going to come upon you. It's going to flow out of you so naturally that you'll just begin. And the prophetic, it's, it, on, on multiple levels, one, you're going to clearly hear the voice of God. You're going to know what God is saying for the moment, and you're going to know what God is about to do in the future. That's right. Are you all hearing me? Yeah. God's going to give you eyes to see. Yes. In fact, there is a dramatic increase of the seer anointing. S-E-E-R, seer, one that sees. You're not just going to hear, but you're going to see. You're, going to, you're just going to see. You're going to know. You're going to be able to weed through all of the junk and the muck and the mire. You're going to be able to weed through all of the voices that are screaming through social media and, 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 and the media and all of those voices that are coming. And you're going to be able to see right through and see yes. what God is doing. Do you know how much peace you're going to be able to walk in when you already know and see what's going to happen before it happens? In fact, let's go to Isaiah for a moment at chapter 11. Isaiah 11. Oh, Father, I give you praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Is it right that we have a prophetic day today? Yes. Okay, because I just, I'm going to, because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Isaiah, whoops, Isaiah, I went to the wrong Isaiah chapter 11. Now, we were on this incredible series. I jumped in with pastor. Didn't even know I was jumping in, but the Holy Spirit put us together on the seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Remember that? Yeah. The Spirit shall rest upon you, one, the Spirit of wisdom, Spirit of understanding, Spirit of counsel, Spirit of might, the Spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Now, verse 3 says this, and his delight is in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. He's not going to judge by what he sees. He's not going to judge by all the voices coming in. He's going to judge by righteousness. Right. He's going to judge because he knows what God is saying. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. He's not going to look at the circumstances. We are so affected by the circumstances. Right. That go, come on, amen. Oh, look at that going wrong, and what's happening, and why are these people moving from here to there, and why is this happening, and why is that? And then we hear everybody's opinion. Well, I just don't know, and I just think about this, and the voices come in to influence us. But God is raising up a people that are going to so know His voice that we're not going to be amazed by what we see. You're going you're gonna to see all the craziness go on. Say, no, no, that's okay. I know what God's up to. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to hear all the opinions of the wisdom of men. And you're going to say, no, no, I don't need to even listen to that because I know what God is saying. Yeah. Hmm. There is such a, a, an increase of this that is coming. There, let me get through these extremes. There's going to be extreme manifestations of God's judgment. One of the things God was speaking to me very strongly yesterday about, I'm going to hit this for just a few moments, because it is important, and I don't know why it's important for you to know, I just know it's important, Amen. is, that there, is that there is tremendous judgment coming to California. Yeah. California, if you would separate it as its own country, is the fifth largest economy in the world. Only greater is Japan. Germany, China, and the whole of the United States. California by itself is the fifth largest economy in the world. Wow. But God has turned California over to, to ungodly leadership. Yeah. Wow. Yes. One of the first signs that judgment is upon a people is when God turns you to ungodly leaders. Yeah. Are you all hearing me? Yeah. And there is tremendous, you're going to see a massive increase. There are great devastations and judgments coming to California. You think the fires have been bad so far. We haven't seen anything yet. 
the fires, the earthquakes, the devastation, the destruction, the homeless problem, which I'm sure you've heard of, is going to increase exponentially because it is not a housing problem, it's a demon possession problem. Amen. It's not a mental health problem, it's a demon possession problem. It's not a drug addiction problem, it's a demon possession problem. And no matter what they try, it will not work. You want, mark these words of this prophet here this morning. No matter what they try, God spoke to me. He said, whatever they try, I will frustrate. Yeah. Yes. For I will require them to have to look unto me for an answer. But not only will there be extreme manifestations of God's judgment, there will be extreme manifestations of God's mercy. Simultaneous. Simultaneous. The, the word the Lord kept giving me over and over again is cry out for judgment and mercy. Cry out for justice, excuse me. Justice and mercy. Justice and judgment go hand in hand. Right. Judgment is not about the wrath of God. It's about executing justice. Right. I'm going to say that again. Judgment is not about the wrath of God. Judgment is about executing justice. Right. And the foundation of the throne is built upon justice. Just God operates in justice. Put that deep in your spirit. One time I'll come back and I'll preach a, another whole message on justice. But cry out for justice and for mercy. Come on, amen. amen. Cry out for justice and for mercy. You see, there is a spirit of hate that is running rampant in America today. Yes. And it's, yes. uh, hate will always blind you. Yeah. Unforgiveness and hatred always blinds you. That's why God, Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged. Yes. For with whatever measure you use, it will be measured unto you. Why do you try to remove the speck out of your brother's eye and yet have a plank in your own eye? The plank is not your own sin. The plank is your judgment. When you're judging in your judgment, are you hearing me? You can't see clearly. Are you understanding? When you're judging with your judgment, when you're and what is that judgment? This is a. Uh, can I just smack the devil here for a moment? See, the spirit of judgment is not applying the word of God to people's actions. That is that is simply what we're to do. We're to apply the word of God to people's actions. The spirit of judgment is to judge their motives. Right. Because nobody knows the motive of a man. You know? Nobody knows the motive of a man, but that witchcraft spirit, and it is a witchcraft spirit that's running rampant, yeah. and that spirit of hatred which blinds us. That's why there's so many people on the media that everything they look at our president do, they say, well, he's a racist, and he hates me, he's, it's this and that. They've already judged, they're sitting in the spirit of judgment, and they already are judging his motives. So even if his actions turn out to produce something good, they still assign an evil motive. They're incapable of seeing what's really going on. Right. Right. Huh? And I'm not right. saying it's just that one direction. That's just an easy one to point out. Amen. Come on, amen. And that's one of the things that we've got to guard ourselves against. Don't skip on the judgment seat. Jesus did not judge. And he said he would not. This end time anointing, this manifestation of the seven spirits, uh, manifestations of the outpouring of the seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit will produce in us that we will not judge by what we see. <laughs> Come on, amen. Nor by what we hear in the ear, but our judgment will be righteous. It'll be according to truth. Do yes. you understand the difference? Come on. Let's get right. There's going to be extreme manifestations of God's judgment. Now, devastate in this next decade, some, there is some tremendous devastation that will be happening in California. Tremendous de devastation. And I felt the Lord speak to me and he said, the heartland of America and the South must be ready, must be ready to come because there is also a prophetic destiny upon California. Yeah. California has, an, has, has had California singularly in, as the greatest single influence upon the cultures of the world than any other single yeah. place. Yeah. There is no other place that has had more influence on the cultures of the world than California. Amen. Hello? Yeah. Through the media, through the, uh, the, the, the Hollywood, through San Francisco and the Bay Area. There's such a, through, through, through the Silicon Valley and Facebook and Google and, and all of the, yeah. the, the influence of our culture, the influence of our society. And so, but that, that is, you got to understand when you see the devil doing that, the devil has taken something God destined and has perverted it. 
So God is allowing, God is going to allow California to eat the harvest of their wickedness. But in his mercy, he is going to use that. Many will look at what's coming as devastation, but God said it will be a purifying fire. Yes. But in two ways that the heartland and the south of America must be ready, must be ready. One is they must be ready to send missionaries. Now right. y'all hear me yeah. into California as this takes place. But also they must be ready to, to carry on the refugees that will flow out of that state. And there will be multitudes that will flow out of that state. And they will, be, they will be as if refugees that will come out of that state. But you're not just to come. And the Lord was speaking to my heart. He said it's, the focus is not to be the natural needs. There will be many natural needs. But the focus is to be the spiritual breakthrough. Amen. And I literally saw them walking around like uh, people that walked around in, in New York City after 9-11 when the towers had collapsed. And everybody was covered with that soot. And they were walking around just like in a fog and a daze. And I saw them, people from California, they were walking around and, and, and like a fog and a daze because of the wickedness and the destruction that they had experienced. And then I saw people standing at the door of churches and saying, come here, come here. And these once hardened people who had no interest in God and had rejected God, yeah. they would just say, oh, okay. Yeah. And they walked in and then I saw yeah. the children of God taking... Yeah. Uh, claws and, and washcloths with water and wiping their faces and all the soot was coming off and they were just receiving it was the washing of the water of the word <laughs> Jesus 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 we have to recognize we have to recognize that God has spared us Yes. And God has put you in places and spared us. Not so we can look and say, oh, California. Ugh. No, that the, we can be the missionaries. Right. We, can be, yeah. we can be the ones that bring the light of the knowledge yeah. of the glory of God as yes. revealed in the face of Jesus. Yes. We can be the ones that come in and not sit there and say, oh, it's good riddance. They deserve it. But sit there and say, oh, God, have mercy in the yes. midst of judgment. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> because it will affect the world. Oh, yes. You can't have the fifth largest economy in the world be, go through destruction and it not affect the world. It right. will affect the world. Right. There'll be extremes of increase of wealth and financial chaos at the same time. There'll be extremes. Everything that can be shaken is going to begin to be shaken. But the reason is so that that which cannot be shaken will remain. Yes. Yes. Brother Steve, that's that's wow. That's a, that's that's pretty heavy. I was hoping you were going to show up and say 2020. God's going to give us vacations on tropical islands, and people are going to give us foot massages for the next 15 years. <laughs> Isaiah 33 verse 6. See, the role of the prophetic will be even more important in this next decade. God will be reintroducing, or God has been reintroducing the prophetic for 30 years now. Yeah. Back into the body of Christ. But now it is time to mature in the body of Christ. It must be bathed and birthed in humility and honor. Amen. I'm going to say that again. The, the prophetic must be bathed and birthed in humility and honor. Just put that in your spirit. I, yeah. I don't have time to, to, to develop on that. The people that will walk in this are people that are going to tremble at his word. Isaiah 33, verse 6. Lord, help me. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. Not lack of problems or extremes. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability yes. of your times yes. and the strength of salvation. Amen. Let me say that again. God's wisdom yeah. and the knowledge of God and from God will be 
the stability yeah. of your times. Yeah. Your stability will not be rooted in your circumstances. Amen. Amen. And for too long, we have wanted our circumstances to stabilize. Yeah. Come on, amen. Yeah. We wanted our finances to stabilize. Yeah. We wanted our relationships to stabilize. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We wanted our churches to stabilize. Yeah. That's right. yeah. We don't like shit. We don't like change. Right. We don't like instability. We don't like shaking. Yeah. It makes us feel unsafe. When everything around us is shaking. And so often what we do is when the ground is shaking, we run and try to find new ground that is steady. And God is saying, you're not going to find stability in anything other than my wisdom and my knowledge. Your stability will not be in your circumstances. Your stability is that you have heard my word. Yeah. You know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying. And you know that you know my voice. Yeah. Yeah. So the ground is shaking, but you are not shook. Come on, right. right. are y'all hearing me? Yeah. We've got to be very careful here. Very careful here. Because the tendency is when the ground is shaking, again, we run to other ground. But that's going to get shaken too. Right, right. Because everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So that that which cannot be shaken will remain. The only thing that cannot be shaken is the word of the living God. It does not mean something has necessarily gone wrong because everything's shaking. It means God is removing our trust in everything that is other than His Word. The word stability literally means the quality of being steady, securely, and immovably fixed in a place. The wisdom and knowledge of God, that is what is going to make you immovable. You're going to be fixed. Yes, yes, yes. You're going to stand. Yes. Come on, take on the whole armor of God. Yes. And having done all to stand, you're going to stand therefore. Come on, amen. You're going to stand. Everything's shaken. The ground under you has disappeared. But you're standing. Yes. Because the 2020s is going to be a decade of extremes. And if you're looking for calmness and predictability, you will not find it in the 2020s. Where you're going to find calmness and predictability is in the word that never changes. Come on, is, this, is this speaking to anybody? It's why you're not, this is not going to, that's why I said the word of the Lord and you hearing God's voice in a new dimension is not going to be like some little extra blessing for a few spiritual people. It is an absolute necessity. Amen. Amen. I will not be, I will not be moved. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is Christ is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. It is a stability. It is that makes you fixed immovably in your place. And it is the strength of salvation. <laughs> that word salvation, listen. It means deliverance, safety. It means this. To be in a state of freedom from danger. Yes. The word, the wisdom, and the knowledge of God is what will bring you into a state of being free from danger. Come on. Amen. Is, is, can we be honest here? Isn't that the number one reason we tend to leave shaky ground yeah. to find what we think is stable ground? Because we're scared here. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 
Yes. We're afraid of danger. And God says, no, no, no. It doesn't matter what happens to the ground. That's right. It doesn't matter what happens around you. That's right. My wisdom and my knowledge will be the strength yes. of your deliverance, the strength yes. of your freedom from danger. Yes. My word is what will hold you. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. John 10, verse 27. How long do I have? I don't know. I, I, I know I have all day. I don't know if you all have. John 10, 27. My sheep occasionally on a really good day. No. My sheep hear my voice. That's right. You know, I kind of find this interesting, and I don't know, maybe I'm taking a little too much license here, but. He didn't say my lambs hear my voice. He said my sheep hear my voice. See, the lambs don't know the voice of the shepherd. The lambs follow the sheep. The sheep are the mature lambs. Are you all hearing me? The lambs follow the bleeding of the other sheep. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. My sheep, my children who have grown up, they know my voice. But the lambs, see, see, that's why you're gonna have, there are many lambs in the church, and that's why they need you. Amen. Because as they're still developing, they don't know the voice of God easily. Uh, come on, amen. amen. But they need amen. sheep. They need mature ones that know the voice of God. Amen. I'm not saying they can't, they can't hear the voice. I'm not saying that at all. But how many know as we grow in God, we become confident in yes. knowing, I, I know God. I know the voice of God. Yes. Come on, yes. amen. As we grow in maturity. Yes. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they Follow me. Hebrews chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, someone say today. today. Do not harden your hearts. That's right. That's right. I want to deal quickly here on a few things on hearing the voice of God. Because I've been sharing you prophetically uh, uh, just even just a little bit of what's coming in the 2020s. But my focus today is to pray for your hearing ears. Amen. Come on, amen. Yeah. And here he's giving us a great insight. He said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confession, our confidence steadfast to the end. While it was said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. Yes. For who having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Mm -hmm. Now with whom he was angry 40 years, was it not with those who sinned? whose corpses fell in the wilderness, and to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. I want you to put three things in here. Number one, everybody say here. 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 Number two, believe. Say believe. believe. And number three, say obey. obey. I want to say something to you. I believe many people who are struggling to hear the voice of God are not really struggling to hear the voice of God. They're struggling to obey the voice of God. And as a result, they're wandering in the wilderness. Come on, when you get off, come on, when you get on that 187 miles, stay on, I, you know, stay on this <laughs> Interstate 20, 170 or whatever, yeah, I-20, for 120, 187 miles, then I get off course, it says rerouting, 
Turn left. No, I don't want to. That's right. Are you all here, man? I believe many times that God has been speaking. He spoke little things. Not We, we went these big, booming things. I, the Lord, have come, and I'm going to lay out the next 10 years for you. And you're going to do this, and you're going to buy that, and you're going to sell this, and you're going to marry this, and you're... Mm -hmm. And you're going to have these many kids and you're going to do this and you're going to have that job and all these things. And instead, the Lord's sitting there saying little things, little, little things. He's looking for obedience in the little things. Yeah. He's like, uh, oh, oh, you're in woman. He says, pray for her. Yeah. I'm busy, Lord. I got, I, uh, the, the, there's food, you know, on the stove and I, I just don't have time. <clears throat> no, you were hearing the voice of God. It was that little still small voice, that little nudge. It wasn't God st splitting the sky open in Walmart, looking down through the ceiling saying, Steve! Hey, lay hands. It's that little, mm, yeah. it's that moment of compassion when you see somebody struggling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, amen. It's that little nudge, that, 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 that little nudge. Today, if you hear his voice, yeah. do not harden your heart. That's right. That's right. Today, if you, you see that needy person, you see that person on the street, or you see that person that's yeah. struggling, or, or someone's ahead yeah. of you in the, in the store, and, and they have to start returning items because they can't afford it. And, and, and you know, you're, 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 you're tight too on your money, but you just feel that little compassion in your heart says, you, you know, you should pay for that. But you just, no, no you know, I, really, I, got, I got stuff I need to buy. Today, you, no, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Yes. Believe that that is God. Believe that the Lord, that you're his sheep and you hear his voice. Yes. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. We so easily doubt. We get those little nudges to do something, to pray something, to share something, to give something. We go those little nudges and, and you know, oh, is that really God? Oh, I'm not sure it's God. Oh, I need like 14 fleeces. <laughs> you know, I need confirmation on top of confirmation on top of confirmation. Yeah. And God is looking for a people that will be tender to his voice yeah. and just quickly respond. Yeah. And I have found the more quickly you are to respond, the more easy it is to discern his voice. Yeah. 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 Amen. Huh? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In fact, uh, I, I like to tell people this, obey fast. Yeah. When, when that little nudging of the spirit, obey fast, that little nudging at three o'clock in the morning, you wake up and why am I awake at three in the morning? There's that little prayer burden. Obey fast. Don't come up with 20 excuses. Well, I got a meeting at 7 a.m. and I really need to, It's an interview. I really need to be rested. No, no, no. Obey fast. Yes. Today, someone said today. Yes. Today, if you hear his voice, do not Harden your heart. Today, if you hear his voice, uh, this is a big one. This is a big one. It's a huge one. I've resisted this many times. God, forgive me, but I've resisted many times. But you're talking about to somebody and you're having a conversation and then a little bit of gossip begins to slip in. And you feel that little thing like, you know, maybe you shouldn't say that. But you're already halfway into the conversation. Come on, you're already making your complaint. You already made a little thing and said instead of backing off and then when the Holy Spirit just said, mm, don't go there. You finish your thought and maybe you wind it, you water it down just a little bit, but you still go through instead of saying, no, oh, I'm not going to speak that. I'm not going to speak ill of my brother or sister. I'm not going to speak ill of that minister or that ministry. I'm not, I'm, no, 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 I'm not going there. Today, if you hear his voice. Do not harden your heart. That's right. Today, young people, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. When you sit there and you're, you're, somebody calls up and some unsafe friend calls up or schoolmate, they say, hey, come on over. We got a party over there. And that little nudge in your spirit says, mm, you, know, you shouldn't go. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. No, right. no, nope, nope, I'm not going there. No, nope, I shouldn't turn there. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times in the nations of the world by trusting that little voice in my heart that little nudging God has saved me from tremendous trouble tremendous problems and dangers it generally wasn't this big resounding Steve this is God 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 it was that still small voice that little nudging today someone say here here. Obey. Obey. I say here. Here. Believe. Believe. Obey. Obey. The original HBO. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Exodus chapter 17. 
Exodus chapter 17. Let me get through this quickly. Are you all with me? Yeah. Then all the congregation of the beginning with verse one, then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped in Rephid, Rephid, or Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Now they had just come out of Egypt, supernaturally delivered. They had just come through the Red Sea. They had just seen the entire armies of Egypt wiped out as God fold the sea back on them. They had seen the pillar of fire that protected them. They, they, oh my gosh. But then now they get into the wilderness of sin and there's no water. And the people contended with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. Put that in your spirit. They turned to Moses. And said, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? And why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses. And said, why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? And Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb. And you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it that the people may drink. Yeah. And Moses did so in the sight of the, Israel, of the elders of Israel. So he called that place Massa and Meribah. Because of the contention of the children of Israel. And because the, they tempted the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Amen. What? They had just been delivered out of Egypt. I mean, the firstborn were slain. They saw the ten plagues. They were marched out. They were protected by a pillar of fire. Then the Red Sea was split open. They walked through with piles of water on either side. They get on the other side, screaming out in fear again. Then God swallows up the armies of Egypt with the, with the great Red Sea. And now they're saying, well, is God really with us? Yeah. yeah. Come on, Amen. Yeah. Three problems. Put it in your spirit. In hearing and walking in the stability. That wisdom and knowledge is the stability of your times. Right, and the strength of your salvation. Problem number one. They demanded Moses provide for, for them. They looked to man first, not God. Right. Are you all hearing me? Yes. They looked to man first, not God. Be very careful in your spirit. When man promises you provision. When man promises you protection, there is no one who can provide except God Almighty. And there is no one who can protect except God Almighty. That's right. Huh? That's right. We look to man. We look to man in government. That's what's going on today. We look to man in church. Yeah. Pastor, minister, why don't you provide provide water for me? No, they're not the ones who ever gave you the water in the first place. They're not the ones who delivered you out of your Egypt. They're not the ones who brought you through your Red Sea. They're not the ones who protected and provided for you. The same God that saved you, the same God that filled you with the Spirit, is the same God that is with you today to provide all of your needs. First problem is they looked to Moses to provide for them. The second problem is they failed to believe God, who had done so many miracles already, would perform another one. Are you hearing me? They failed to believe that the God who had performed miracles would perform another one. How easy is that for us, guys? How easy is that for us to experience? Yeah. When we see God had touched us, had spoken to us, had, had healed us, had saved us, had, had blessed us, had done something. And I'm almost done here, but put it in your spirit. But is he going to do it again today? Is he still with me today? He who began a good work in you yes. shall bring it unto completion. He says he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. The God... When Paul was writing to one of the churches and he said, we felt the very sentence of death. They were literally laid for dead, stoned dead. He said, we felt the very sentence of death. But this happened that our trust might not be in man, but in God who raises the dead. For he hath delivered us. He is delivering us. And we are confident that he will continue to deliver us. 
if God has delivered you, then he's presently delivering you. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, amen. Glory. If he began it in you, then he's going to bring it to completion. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> that the second problem is they failed to believe. They had failed to believe that the God who'd done so many miracles in the past was going to do it again. And the third problem they had, they started to believe a lie. They believed they were better off back in the bondage of Egypt. They lost the gratitude of what they had today. Put it in your spirit. Now I'm coming in for a closing. Are you getting something today? Yes. Put it in your spirit. Do not base your gratitude of today on what you had yesterday. Well, that's right. Amen. Mm. Because yesterday's yesterday. Right. You might have had more yesterday. Right. You might have had yes, less yesterday. But be grateful for what you have today. Amen. 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 I remember going through a season of a real economic challenging season. And we had just were running out of money. Completely just. But I had the bills paid that day. But I didn't know how I was going to pay the bills tomorrow or in a week from now. And I remember I started growing in this and I started waking up every morning. And the first thing I'd say is today, I'm okay. <coughs> today, God, I'm grateful. That's My right. bills are paid. That's right. I don't know about tomorrow, but I'm not worried about tomorrow. Yeah. Right, man. Today, I'm okay. And then there even came the day when I couldn't pay the bill. And I no longer could say today my bills are paid. I just said today I'm okay. Right. I still have a roof over my head. Amen. I still have food in my stomach. I still have clothes on my back. Father, I'm grateful for what I have today. That's Do you right. know that was one of the most difficult financial seasons I'd ever gone through? And it was the mo one of the most wonderful, joy-filled times I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Because I learned to be grateful for what I did have. Yeah. 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 Gratitude in what I did have. Yeah. Lord, I'm grateful. That you brought us out of the Red Sea. Oh, we still have need. We got. We need water. You know what we need. But you took care of us. You delivered us from a mighty army. Water is not a problem. Amen. Amen. Hey, God. Yes. Yes. If they would have just been so just simple and grateful instead of griping and complaining, which yes. ended up leading them into problem after problem with yes. God because they griped and complained. Despite all the good things God had done for them, they kept complaining and complaining and complaining because they kept looking at it in the natural instead of saying, no, the God who spoke and told us to come out of Egypt, the God who spoke and said he would meet us in the wilderness, the God who spoke and said he's sending us to a promised land, that God will fulfill his word. No matter what my circumstance today says my God will fulfill his word and that I will rejoice his pillar of cloud is still with us by day his pillar of fire is still with us by night I still feel his presence oh everything may seem crazy and the armies may seeming to surround me and the enemy may be seeming to threaten me but oh I have peace because my wisdom and knowledge is stability of my times. Right. The wisdom and knowledge is stability of my times. Why don't we lift our hands and begin to pray. Father, I give you praise. Shakara.